I did not come from a farming family. In the past, I actually knew very little about plants and about farming, but deep down inside, I always had an interest in it. Even as a very young child, I used to pretend that I had a farm outside in the yard. And when I grew up, that interest and that passion did not go away. And now I'm proud to say that I own my own farm business, despite starting off knowing nothing and having to figure out everything on my own. Today I'm going to show you a glimpse of what life is like on my little farm. I'll show you some of the customer orders that are going out. I'll show you some different food that we raise. And I'll teach you some quick, fun, and easy facts about farming and different plants. I'll show you how corn works, how kernels are formed, when to know how to harvest an eggplant, tips for growing and picking different things, and some encouragement to get you started on your small business journey. So let's get to it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for future videos and check out some of the many farming videos that I already have. And beware of the broody hen, they can be vicious sometimes. He wants to hatch these eggs, but there's no rooster, so it's not gonna work. I went into more detail about this in other videos, but to give you a quick background, one of my favorite things to grow was pumpkins. Every year, like most families growing up, we would get pumpkins and carve them, and I thought they were just so fun. So I would save seeds and plant them, and each year I would get a couple, but the results weren't great. So as I got older, I decided to really educate myself, learn more. And the more I learned, the better results I would get each year. So as I started to do better with my pumpkins, I wanted to try other things. And before you knew it, I was growing a little bit of everything. I had so much stuff, I couldn't eat it all. So I was like, you know what, what am I doing? Why don't I try to sell it? I knew nothing about starting a business. I didn't know, really know where to begin, but I knew I wanted to do it and I knew it was worth a try. The way I see it is you only get one life and you might as well live it to the fullest with no regrets. I didn't want to be one of those people that looks back one day and says, oh man, I should have done this. And I didn't want to be one of those people that always says one day, one day, but that day never comes. One day is not going to come unless you make it happen. So I started educating myself, reading as many books as I could, watching as many videos as I could, talking to real farmers, business owners. And a lot of what I learned was through trial and error. Every year you learn something. You're never truly an expert because every year farming is going to teach you something new. My best friend lived on a really busy main road, so I was like, that's the perfect location. So we partnered up, opened up a farm stand, and it did really well. But he moved out of state this year, and I didn't want to give up the business. I didn't want it to die just because he was moving. I didn't want to give up my dream and what I had worked so hard for, so I had to get creative. Since I couldn't do the stand at his house anymore, and since theft was a bit of an issue as well, I decided to take a chance and do pre-orders instead and have people meet me in town for local pickup and I was very nervous about it, but it was worth a shot. It was better than giving up, and thank God it worked. So I'm gonna give you a little look at how we prepare some of the orders each week. Each week it's something different. I'll show you what this week's is gonna be, and I'll teach you all about some different plants while we're up there. Here's my potatoes, by the way. They're starting to die off. That's normal, that's good. Once the vines die off, I can harvest those. So if you subscribe, you'll get to see that too. And here's the sweet potatoes with the praying mantis. That's good luck, that's a good sign. So I'll show you those orders now. All right, let's get to the garden. It's the 4th of July, but even on holidays, still gotta work if you have a farm. So I'm up here picking cabbage and really pretty purple cauliflower for my customers. And then I'm gonna pick some more squash, zucchini, and I actually found some eggplant that's ready, so I'll show you that. We got so much rain last night, so this, this thing's really slippery. I'm gonna have lots of banana peppers to pick. But look, I didn't even realize these were ready. You wanna pick these when the skin is still tender and shiny. If it starts to get dull, it's gonna be bitter. This is a slicing variety, that's why it's skinnier. They say knee-high by the 4th of July, but this corn's about as tall as me. Some of it's taller. And it's starting to get little baby ears. Okay, it's Monday, so that means that it's time to check and see what's coming along, so that way I can make our post and advertise what we're going to be selling for our Wednesday bundle orders. And then I'll also show you how some different things are coming along, but look.
And if you don't already know that, is the flower of an eggplant. There's a little eggplant starting. So we had a bunch of storms and really, really, really heavy, like monsoon rain and some wind the other day. So there are a few casualties. Well, that's cool. Some new little tiny baby heads are growing where I cut the up, the, like the main cabbage head. Oh, look, I'm gonna have more to pick. That's good. But the corn did get a little bit damaged, which is pretty disappointing because when you have a small operation like I do, any loss is significant because there's not a lot to go around. But I mean, I can still pull this ear off and see how it's looking and give it to the chickens at least. They'll enjoy that. But it could have been a lot worse. Here's some more that came down. It's so disappointing. Chickens will get it. So if you don't already know this, I'll teach you real quick about how corn works, because it's actually really, really cool. So you see these tassels on top. It's always an exciting sign when you start to see these because these are actually what's gonna make the pollen to fertilize the plant and produce the corn. And this is why you want to plant corn close together and in like a block or like in a big square or rectangle. If you just do like one or two rows straight, there's not going to be enough to pollinate each other and you're going to have incomplete corn. So if you've ever gotten a piece of corn and you peel it and it's missing a bunch of kernels, that's because there was a failure during pollination and maybe because there weren't enough of fellow corns around for it to work. So what happens is the wind blows, these shake, pollen comes off and then lands on the ears and on the silk. Each individual silk is connected to its own kernel that's inside of here, which is really cool. So when the pollen lands on it, it serves as like a little tube and it's gonna send the pollen in there and form a kernel. So this serves a purpose. A lot of people don't realize that. And then once it starts to turn brown, which you can see signs of it, is starting to there and dry up, then that's a good indication that your corn's gonna be ready. So you can just gently pull this back once this is brown check see if it looks complete or not if it's not close it back up and give it another day or two and it's also best and easiest to pick it in the morning pull it right off eat it while it's fresh because if you let sweet corn sit for a while the sugars in it are going to turn more to starch that's why local fresh sweet corn tastes so much better that's than what's in the store which is yet another reason to eat and buy local instead of shopping at big stores and look how good the spaghetti squash is looking there's a little one. And look at this, a baby watermelon. And look how it has all the little fuzz on it. It's cute. Okay, and then when I was up here the other day, I saw some cucumbers that were looking like they were getting close. So let's go see how that's coming along. Oh, and as we head over to the... Um, Cucumbers, another really cool thing about corn is they're just designed to survive because when it rains, rain will drip strategically down all here like a little fountain and lead right down to the roots. It's really cool. Okay, we're at the cucumber patch. Let's take a look. Okay, they're actually looking close. They might need another day or two. Look at all those, but that's great because for a while there, I didn't know if I'd have any cucumbers this year because it was taking these plants forever to grow. And we're starting to get tomatoes now. Now we just have to wait for them to get size and to ripen. I'll have to tie these back up. And I have three bouquet orders to make tonight too. So there's a lot to do. I've been way too busy and it's hard to do that with only one hand and pick everything. But look. Banana peppers, green peppers, cucumbers. I'm gonna go pick more squash now actually. And eggplant.
Monkey's helping. Oh, and here's one of the bouquets that I made. It has my chicken feather in it. For our bundle this week. <laughs> what was that? For our bundle this week, I made a chocolate zucchini bread. The zucchini was made with the veg. That's the punk making all the noise. Yeah. Okay. For our produce bundles this week, I made a chocolate zucchini bread. The zucchini was growing right here on our little mini farm. Here's a sample. Here's one. And the eggs in the zucchini bread were grown from the chickens we have out back. Let's get a close so, up. So it's a really good recipe. I made 16 mini loaves because we have 16 bundles going out this week. And this zucchini lost its beak, so that's why we're keeping this one. Okay, I'm going back to the field now to pick the rest of the stuff. More squash and some cabbage. We have some red cabbage that's ready too. Look, that's a good sign. The silk's starting to dry and turn brown. Once it's completely dry and brown, that means that it should be ripe. I was up here the other day picking squash and zucchini, like I do pretty much every day, because it's just too many. And it was it just started raining out of nowhere, and it was so slippery up here. And it was kind of annoying in the moment, but looking back, it was also kind of comical. So that is 8 Ball Zucchini. I've shown this on this channel before, but if this is your first time seeing this, it is very similar to regular zucchini. The taste is similar. It's just in a round form. But people really like it. They have a lot of fun with it just because it's different. It's kind of novelty. And we were in a drought, and it was dry for so, so, so long. And then we just got like monsoon rains for days straight, and some of the plants absorbed it too fast, and they started to split. And so we did lose a few plants, but I mean, what can you do? So I'm gonna have to clean up some of the mess. And then here's some patty pan squash. Oh look, eggs, gotta get rid of that. Honestly, I'm just gonna pull that off, patty pan squash, very cute. And get rid of that negativity. Look, a butterfly. And this is really exciting. Look, it's been a really rough year for sunflowers. They just weren't sprouting. And when they would, things kept eating them and it was so dry and it was just hard to get anything to work. But we do have a few that made it. The pollinators love it. Oh, and then over here, I did plant some Jill Belittles. Oh look, there's a little baby winter squash. Anyway, I did plant some Jill Belittles, and those are very similar to Jack Belittle pumpkins, which I'm sure you're familiar with. It's those little tiny mini pumpkins that you see every fall. And look, they sprouted. So the main difference is Jill Belittles, besides the name being different, is that the Jill Belittles are a, a bit of a newer, stronger pumpkin variety that is more... It's not like completely resistant to it, but compared to the Jack Belittles, Jill Belittles are more hardy and resistant against powdery mildew, which if you've ever grown a viney crop, or if you're planning to, just beware, you look a spider. Just beware that at some point throughout the season, especially if you live somewhere where it's really humid or if you get a lot of rain, you are gonna get powdery mildew, even if you spray against it. At some point it will come for your crop. But this variety is a little bit more hardy against it, so. That's always a good sign. And I pl planted these a little bit later because it only takes them like 90 days to mature. So I didn't want them ready too early in the season. I need them for fall. And look at the watermelon. That's just completely taken off. Look how many there are. Look at the little baby one. I love how they're fuzzy when they first start to form. So we're doing an heirloom variety called Moon and Stars. It is a seeded variety. And you can see it has little stars all over the plant. And the watermelon itself will look like that too. And I'm also gonna have traditional and orange seedless. And I think I did some sangria too. And look at this. The first little sign of a cantaloupe. Which I actually, I do not like cantaloupe, but all my customers do. Well, a ton of my customers do. So gotta grow it for them. This plant was looking a little rough, but it's starting to get better. Oh, there's more over here. And it's funny because right before they turn ripe, you can smell it. But obviously these still have a ways to go. So I'll show you a few more things since I didn't film when I was picking this stuff earlier. And then I'm going to go cut some cabbage. 
So here's some habanero peppers. They're not orange yet. As soon as I turn orange, I can pick them. But these plants are looking really good and healthy. And then here's some jalapenos, which are actually getting very close. I could pick those in just another couple days, probably. And as you saw, I already picked a ton of peppers, but here's some more sweet peppers. I have so many banana peppers, they're doing really well. Sorry for my shadow getting in the way. There's more banana peppers that aren't quite ready yet, but they will be very soon. Poblanos. Oh, here's one that looks good. Bell pepper. This will be an orange variety. Fun fact, the green bell peppers are just immature ones. If you leave them on long enough, if it's a red variety and it matures, it'll turn red when it's ripe. Same with orange and yellow. And the eggplant's doing really, really well too. It's loaded and I already picked a ton of it. In just a couple of days, there's gonna be more to pick already. And they're very prickly, so be careful. I'm gonna walk through the corn maze. I hope I don't get lost. I picked a ton of cucumbers, but you can see there's already more on here that will be ready in just a few days. Here's the pickling variety. Little baby pickles. And before you know it, we'll have tomatoes. Oh, and just so you know, these keep popping up. I'm gonna have to put on gloves and get rid of these. These are called poke berries. If you let it mature, it gets all these really, really, really dark purple berries all over it. And they're extremely toxic. The plant's toxic. It's poisonous to you and your pets. So please remove them if you see them. And look, our first baby pumpkin. Oh, look, that's cute. The little tendrils grabbed onto a weed. All right, now to get back to work. This is probably hands down the biggest beet I've ever grown. It's like as big as my hand. And look at this gold one. I'm gonna pick some red romaine tomorrow when I get back from work. And then tomorrow I'll pick cucumbers and cabbage. And the beet greens are really, really healthy and they taste good, but I can't eat all of these. So I'm gonna give some to the chickens. And then I gotta make some bouquets. Don't mind that, that's just the neighbor's dog. Oh, and look, the rainbow carrots are almost ready. And this is called dinosaur kale, that's almost ready. There's my sweet little baby. So now I'm bagging up all the peppers, getting them ready to go out to the customers tomorrow. And we ran out of room in the fridge because we picked so much stuff, so we're having to use the cooler. So I'm bagging those up. Fun fact, peppers have three times more vitamin C than an orange, so they're very healthy and there's so many different ways to eat them. One of my favorite ways is stuffed peppers, so I'm probably gonna make that with some of the extras. And then here's the cabbage, turned out nice and pretty. And then we always give our customers a recipe too. So at times it might seem overwhelming. My mom, for the most part, is doing all the baking. And then there's me that, for the most part, I'm doing all of the, like, the picking, the planting, taking care of the plants by myself. It can be overwhelming, especially because I work a full-time job, too. And we have so much stuff, we're running out of space. But it's a blessing. I keep telling my mom that. It's, it's a lot of work, it's overwhelming, but it's a blessing. Because thank God we have this many customers. Thank God our plants are producing well because it has been such a challenging year with the weird weather. So just remember that hard work does pay off and there's going to be a lot of challenges. That's part of life. It's just a test. If you pass the test, things will get better. It's all starting to pay off now. We're still a very, very small, very young, growing business. But everyone's got to start somewhere and we're lucky that things are going as well as they are. We're by no means as big or as busy or as 
you know, successful as some of the farms. We don't do this full time. Now, at the rate it's going, honestly, it, it could maybe eventually go into something full time. But then where we live in Maryland, it gets cold during the winter, so we won't have stuff to grow and sell during the winter. So I don't want to give up my full time job, at least not anytime soon, because I like having that security and the insurance and all that. But it's still exciting because we'll see how this continues to go and we'll see where it takes us. So just remember, hard work pays off, but you're not going to get there. You're not going to reach your goal unless you put in the work, you put in the time, put in all the behind the scenes work, blood, sweat and tears that no one else is seeing. You got to work at least with something like this or if you own your own business, holidays, weekends. Sometimes you're going to have to sacrifice some fun and some social time, but it's going to pay off in the long run because if you hustle and build your empire while you're young, then later on in life, you're going to reap all the benefits. And that's the goal. I want to keep hustling and saving money and eventually buy some land, enough land where I can expand this and have my horse live with me instead of boarding her. and hopefully expand my flock of chickens as well. So yeah, on days when you're tired and exhausted and working hard and feel like you can't take it anymore, just push through it and remember that there will be a light at the end of the tunnel and if you keep it up and stay consistent, it's all gonna be worth it. So that's my motivational speech for today. So I'm gonna stop blabbing and finish up with this because there's still a lot to do. I have more flower orders that have been coming through so I gotta get to that as well. Then I gotta go collect eggs for the night. So I'm gonna end it here. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, check out some other videos, and we'll see you in the next one. Right, monkey?